Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his key lecture, What is Metaphysics?, Martin Heidegger is going to begin by addressing that very question. And he'll talk about it at the beginning of the lecture, and then he'll come back to it as a key thematic towards the end of the lecture as well. And we want to put these together in order to understand what he is talking about as the nature and scope, the range of metaphysical inquiry or interrogation, however we want to put the activity of engaging in metaphysics that he, he sees as absolutely central for human being, as something essential to, to us, as the kind of being that we are among the whole field of beings in relation to being. Now that's a lot of being language and we'll come back to that in a moment. At the beginning, he, he starts by saying, um, the question, what is metaphysics, awakens expectations of a discussion about metaphysics. And then he says, I'm going to pass that up. I'm not going to try to generalize at the very beginning about the entire field of metaphysics. We'll see why in just a moment. He says, instead, we're going to take up a particular metaphysical question. That question in the rest of this this uh, uh, address is going to be the question of the nothing, but it's also going to be tied in with what he calls the question of the being of beings. So how are these two connected? Well, that's something that, that lies within the realm of metaphysics, as we're going to see. Now, the reason why he says we'll begin with a particular metaphysical question is that he says, by doing this, we will let ourselves be transposed directly into metaphysics. Instead of hearing some generalizations about, well, metaphysics is this, and it's the science of this, or the discipline that does this within philosophy, he's going to have us doing it. Um, he's going to have us engaging in it, and then looking at what we, are, what, what we are engaging with in that process. So he says, only in this way... Now notice how he phrases this. Will we provide metaphysics the proper occasion to introduce itself? You could say that what's going on here is something akin to personification in uh, literary devices, right? Metaphysics itself has to be allowed to encounter us, to uh, explain itself to us, to, to speak to us. And you might say, well, that's a little strange, you know. Um, do you mean like a book talks to us? No, he means the, the, the activity itself has to be allowed to show itself to, to us. And so he says, um, we're going to begin with the unfolding of metaphysical inquiry, then try to elaborate the question and conclude by answering it. This is not the only way to do metaphysics for Heidegger, but this is a fruitful way. And he tells us two key things very early on in the essay. Two things that we have to reflect on uh, a bit. Uh, two things that have to do with the very nature of any genuinely metaphysical inquiry, according to Heidegger. So he calls this the twofold character of metaphysical interrogation. That is, when we are not interrogation like a police interrogation, but when, when, when we are talking back and forth and trying to answer and ask questions about the beings that we're, we're engaged with. So he tells us the first thing is every metaphysical question encompasses the entire range of metaphysical problems. So what does this mean? This means that every single metaphysical question or problem is going to be interrelated with all of the others. That is, it's not going to be possible 
to come to any sort of full resolution or even an understanding, an adequate understanding of them if they're treated in complete isolation from each other if they're, or if they're not actually uh, even acknowledged or addressed. So, you know, to take a few examples, the, the question of the nothing that he's going to explore here is intricately connected with the problem of the being of beings. It's also connected with the, you know, range of logic and the intellect. It's also connected to the question of, well, do emotions mean anything metaphysical? It's connected with the issue of human freedom. All of these are, are going to be interconnected. And what this implies is that we could approach any uh, given metaphysical question and then start untangling it and find a whole bunch of connections to other metaphysical questions and problems. What this means is that the field of metaphysics as such constitutes a comprehensive whole uh, of which we don't want to separate off or isolate out all of the parts from each other because if we do so, we risk not getting to the bottom of a genuinely metaphysical question. It gets even more complicated with what he's calling the second part of this twofold character. Here's where human beings themselves as the inquirers are going to become intimately involved. He says, every metaphysical question can be asked only in such a way that the questioner as such is present with the question. And he goes on to clarify this by saying, that is, is placed in question. So what does all of that mean? This means that you can never have objectivity about metaphysical issues if by objectivity what you mean is totally stripping away all of the human beings who are involved in these metaphysical questions. There, there are quite a few metaphysical questions where although we can treat them in a rather abstract way, we're really talking about human beings to begin with. You know, what is history? Um, you know, what are emotions? You know, a animals also come into that. Um, you know, how does reason function? Well, the only real examples of reason that we have to work with are humans. And we can go on and on and on and on. You know, what is a community? A community of what? Human beings, right? So, you know, there's all sorts of ways in which metaphysical questions might bear upon human beings. Heidegger is going further than that. He is telling us that every metaphysical question has to be asked in a certain way or perhaps a range of ways. It has to be asked in such a way that the questioner is present in the question, to the question, with the question that you don't simply remove yourself. You don't try to think about, you know, human being as such, you know, stripped of all attributes, properties, historical location, uh, contingency, what Heidegger would call finitude. And that uh, the person who is asking the question is also placed in question. This is very important. So if we're thinking about, you know, say the question of freedom, and whether freedom exists and what the meaning of human freedom is, we're not only asking that in the abstract for human beings in general, we're asking that for ourselves. We are directly engaged in the question. We may in fact have to engage in some action or some experiment or some, some uh, experimentation, right? In order to really dig into the question. We may also have to rely on what previous human beings who were you know, very thoughtful about these matters, the previous metaphysicians, for example, had to say about these things, appropriate their insights, and then go further than, than they do. So this is a really important set of distinctions here that Heidegger is, is making. He's telling us that if you want to do metaphysics in a serious fundamental way. This is, this is what is going to be required for that. And then he goes on uh, and he says that um, from this we, must con we conclude that every metaphysical inquiry must be posed as a whole and from the essential position of the existence that questions. And he tells us we are questioning here and now for ourselves. He'll explain a little bit later what that means. I want to jump ahead, however, to where he tells us more about the nature of metaphysics. 
So he, he says that um, if we look at the original meaning of metaphysics, metatafusica, which is the title of Aristotle's books that coming after the physics, um, he says, metaphysics derives from this, and the peculiar title was later interpreted as characterizing the inquiry, the meta, or in Latin, trans, extending out over beings as such. So Heidegger tells us from this, metaphysics is inquiry beyond or over beings, which aims to recover them as such and as a whole for our grasp. Metaphysics is attempting to take in the totality, the all, which includes us, the, you might say, metaphysizing subject, the subject who is engaging in metaphysics. And he is going to go on further from this uh, and draw a really important corollary. But before that, think just for a moment about the implication of this. Heidegger is, is telling us that metaphysics is not simply about having a representation of what is or something along those lines. He says, it aims to recover beings as such and as a whole for our grasp. It is a, you might say, recuperative process. It is attempting to place us where we belong. That is a, a side of metaphysics that often gets left out but really was part of classical metaphysics. So he says, uh, in the question concerning the nothing, such an inquiry beyond or over beings, being as a whole takes place. It proves thereby to be a metaphysical question. And then he reiterates these, these two uh, conditions for metaphysical inquiry. And he goes on and he says that, um, here we go, uh, human existence can relate to beings only if it holds itself out into the nothing. And we're going to talk about that in other videos, what that means. Going beyond beings occurs in the essence of Dasein. Dasein is us, human beings. And then he says this going beyond is metaphysics itself. He makes a contrast here. He tells us, it is not a division of academic philosophy nor a field of arbitrary notions. Metaphysics belongs to the nature of human beings. Metaphysics, we might say, is essential to human being. If we're adopting a rather Aristotelian way of looking at it, where nature and, and essence are quite, quite connected. Another thing that he says <coughs> is metaphysics is the basic, basic occurrence of Dasein, that is, of human being. It is Dasein itself. Because the truth of metaphysics dwells in this groundless ground, it stands in closest proximity to the constantly lurking possibility of deepest error, he says. And he's going to follow up on this by saying that philosophy cannot be reduced to science. Neither can metaphysics be reduced to science as we understand science in the present. But think about the implications of this. So if metaphysics is indeed something that is of the very nature of human beings, we are the creature that engages in metaphysics or the being that engages in metaphysics. Metaphysics is an attempt to understand being with a capital B, to recuperate the beings, to let them speak to us, to re-engage with them. All of that, Heidegger says, is of the essence uh, or of the nature of what it means to be a human being. So, you know, if you think about different ways in which human beings have been characterized through the ages. In philosophy, we typically talk about, you know, man is a rational animal, or sometimes add to it the pregnant uh, uh, extra qualifier, man is a mortal rational animal. Uh, Heidegger would be saying something along the lines of, yes, yes, that's nice, rational, great, mortal, right, sure. But man or human being is the being that engages in metaphysics. This doesn't mean that every single human being does so in any sort of explicit way. In many cases, we may simply inherit a metaphysical position handed down to us, take it from our culture, take it for granted. But it is of our possibility to realize that nature. That is something that can be opened up for any of us. And that is what Heidegger is attempting to do in this very essay, What is Metaphysics?